And I'm RJ. Let's see what we got in the garage today. In this episode, we're working on a 2002 Jeep Wrangler TJ. It has the 4.0 inline six engine with a five speed transmission. Overall, it's in great shape, and this 4.0 is barely broken in at around 116,000 miles. The Jeep is essentially stock, with the only modifications being a cold air intake system and two inch budget boost, complemented nicely with tires and rims off the JK. Unfortunately, the suspension is completely shot. Here's an example of how worn out the suspension is. I shouldn't be able to do that. When the two inch spacers were installed, the stock length shocks were left on. The shocks are now completely worn out, resulting in a bumpy, wobbly, uncomfortable ride. All the bushings on the control arms are rotting out as well. To top everything off, this Jeep suffers from the dreaded death wobble. The goal with this Jeep is to freshen up the suspension with a complete overhaul. That means there's springs, new shocks, bushings, upgraded track bars, and we're gonna do it all for under a thousand dollars. Now this isn't gonna be an extreme build by any means. The owner likes the current height, so we're gonna keep it at about two inches. And also, we're just gonna be tinkering with the suspension. We're not getting new tires yet. I'd love to throw some mud trains under this thing, but that's not what the owner asked me to do. I should also probably mention the owner is my father-in-law, so I better not screw it up. Let's break down our parts list. We've got two inch coil springs for the front and rear from Rusty's Off-Road. We decided to go with polyurethane bushings from Energy Suspension for the control arms, sway bars, and rear track bars. The front track bar is being replaced with a new adjustable one from Rusty's. For the rear, we're keeping the stock one and adding a track bar relocation bracket from Old Man Amy. This will keep the rear axle centered under the Jeep as we add the new springs. We're also going to install a new steering stabilizer from Rubicon Express for good measure. For shocks, we picked up some red Rubicon takeoffs from a Wrangler JK. These have less than 10 miles on them and the length should be perfect for our 2 inch lift. Let's get to work. After taking the tires off, the first thing to do is yank out the control arm. The easiest way I've found to remove the stock rubber bushing is to first heat up the sleeve with a MAC Pro tool. Once that starts smoking, take a ball joint press and an impact gun and push the bushings out. Then take a wire brush to clean up the inside of the sleeve remove any bits of rubber that were left behind. Be sure to let the metal cool off and then coat the inside of the sleeve with grease. Then grease up the new poly bushings and press them in. Now I know a lot of people like to debate the pros and cons of poly bushings versus rubber ones. I'm not going to dive into the details of that right now. You can look it up if you're curious. I chose poly bushings for two main reasons. They're easy to install and they last a long time. After pressing in the new bushings, I went ahead and gave the control arms a fresh coat of paint. I'm using Rust-Oleum Appliance Epoxy. It seems to be pretty durable and it's also cheap. Once I was done with all the control arms, it was time to move on to the coil springs. So I rented a coil spring compressor and began pulling the old worn out springs out. But before I could put in the new springs, I had to remove the two inch spacers. So what I had to end up doing here is I couldn't get the retainer cup for the bump stop out. There's a 15 millimeter bolt up here. Well, it was completely rounded off and rusted and I couldn't get a socket on it. And I just couldn't get this out. So 
what I ended up doing was I cut the lip off the bottom so that the spacer could possibly get over it. On the rear passenger side, the bolt that holds the bump stop on broke off. Now I had already purchased some coil spring retainers for the rear axle and I had to drill a new hole to mount those anyway. To make the reinstallation of the bump stop easier, I just put it on the axle side. This should work just fine and I went ahead and did the same thing to the driver side so both of the rear bump stops matched. To get the new shocks to fit I had to make a minor modification. The holes on the bar pens for the Wrangler JK are spaced differently than the TJ, so I had swapped them out with the bar pens from the old shocks. The process of doing that scratched up the body of the shocks a bit, so to keep everything pretty, I gave them a fresh coat of paint. If you've ever replaced the rear shocks in either a Jeep TJ or XJ, you know that the upper mounting bolts have a nasty habit of breaking off. When I did this job on my XJ, I got lucky, and they all came out just fine. On this TJ, not so much. Every bolt broke. <sighs> I punched out the broken nuts with an impact hammer, and then I dropped in new bolts from the top. Good as new. With that done, I installed the rear track bar relocation bracket and then put the track bar itself back in. Replacing the bushings on the track bar is the same process as replacing them on the control arms. Just heat them up and press them out. I ended up installing some extended end links for the sway bar to keep the right quality and articulation as good as possible. The front sway bar had some nasty rust on it, so I cleaned that up with a grinder and gave it a new coat of paint. With that installed, I added some extended end links to the front as well. I also added some coil spring retainers to the front for good measure. Then it was time for the new steering stabilizer and front track bar. With the stabilizer in and no track bar, I rolled the Jeep back and forth a few times. This centers the axle and makes it easy to adjust the track bar properly. Then with everything torqued down and greased up, it was time to take it for a test drive. It rides nice and performs great on the highway. In addition to that, the death wobble is gone. Of course, the test drive wouldn't be complete without any dirt roads or puddles. With the new suspension under the TJ, it rides nice and it looks good. We managed to stay under budget and most importantly, my father-in-law's hat. Well, that does it for this episode of Up a Creek. Tread lightly and we'll see you next time. What's this? Pick. These are drum brakes. But those are parts for disc brakes. Be sure to watch the next episode to see me do a disc brake conversion on my XJ.